Hello, Slocum 23, you're joining me for Blades of Light and Shadow, Chapter 3, The City by the Sea. You, Mal, and Nia trek through the woods, the Temple of Alara a few days behind you. Alright, team, if we make good time today, we can reach Port Parnassus by noon. Sholor Vash said the shard was in the library. If we get it, we'll be one step closer to rescuing Cade and keeping the Shadow Court gone for good. I've never been to a city as big as Port Parnassus. All I can think about is how excited Cade would have been to see it. Mal and Nia exchange a worried look, then Nia reaches for your shoulder the gen for with a gentle smile. We can explore the entire library of Parnassus for him. Uh, they're supposed to have the largest collection of orcish pastoral poetry in the world. That sounds like a threat. Besides, Anyone can see that uh, what Rain needs is to get lost in a few pints of ale in the port's dockside tavern. But I've heard terrible things about those dogs. So many criminals and gamblers. Don't forget the houses of ill repute. Smugglers who can get you anything your wicked little heart desires. I once blew 5,000 gold in one night at the Tobias Tables. There, the owner kicked me out because he thought I was scamming him. Then, I got into a fight with a card house muscle, broke my jaw in two places. Good times. Good times. I'm with Nia. The library sounds great. It'll be like traveling all over the realms while standing in one place. Cade would have loved that. It doesn't seem right that I get to enjoy them and he doesn't. Well, we find a Way to free Aunt Cade. We'll be sure to bring him to the library so he can enjoy it too. You start to smile when you feel something odd. A low vibration coming from your pack. What? What the? You toss your pack to the ground. A small leather satchel falls out, pulsing and rumbling. Nia quickly digs through the satchel, pulling out the source of the vibration. The green crystal Vash took from the vault. It looks like it's cracking. What in the world? Judging by the last magical rock we dealt with, I'd seriously put that down if I were- The crystal shatters in Nia's hand, fragments raining to the ground, revealing- A vampire kitty? I- I don't know how to feel about this. Oh my goodness! Oh, I want to pet it! I want to pet it! No! Don't do this to me! Don't mother- Leave it alone. We probably shouldn't touch it until we know what it is. Maybe you should put it down, Nia. Oh, but look, it's harmless! It was a good kitty! Harmless. What about those brazer sharp chompers? Ten gold says they're ven venomous. The kitten rubs the side of its face against Nia's palm, peering innocently at Mal. Can we keep it? Can we please keep it? Well, we can't just abandon it in the woods, so sure. I say we call it... Oh, don't do this to me. God damn it. All right, we're calling you Alucard, because I like him too. Isn't that right, Alucard? The cat blinks at you. Why would you call me that? My name's Thrip. Y you can talk? Lights Grace, you're a Nesper, aren't you? Am I already in my cups? W what is going on? Nespers were beloved advisors of ancient elves before the Great War. They're supposed to be extinct. That's certainly news to me. I consider myself very much alive, thank you. Nia holds her hands out, raising threat upward, and bows reverently before the creature. She shoots you a meaningful look, and you drop into an awkward bow as well. Mal just watches, arms crossed, with an eyebrow cocked. Ancient one, you must have been trapped in that crystal for thousands of years. You must be so confused. So what just happened? Let's see, the Elven Empire is all but forgotten. The Shadow Court was banished. I heard everything, little one. I was trapped in the crystal, not asleep. See if I got this right. 
The ramp climbs up a perch on Nia's shoulder, then clears his throat. <clears throat> Collect the onyx shards, do the ritual, banish the ancient evil one. Yes, yes, sounds lovely. Ah, oh, but might we spare some time for a snack first? You can have some of my rations. It isn't much, but y you might like it. You fish a few dried strips of venison from your pack. Mmm, wow. I mean, <clears throat> him. So delicious. You dangle the venison before Threp, and he pulls it down between his two tiny paws. Mmm, scrumptious. Must, much, much appreciated. Rain, was it? That's me. Hold on. We can't just keep this thing around. We don't know how big it's gonna get. At a certain point, we'll start looking for, like, food. And I am not getting eaten by some mangy cat bat. I beg your pardon. The term is remarkably offensive. We aren't leaving him. The Nespers and Elves lived together and cared for one another for centuries. They aren't meant to live in the wild. Trap preens, licking his paw and rubbing it behind his ear. It's true. We're pampered little things. You're... Conspicuous little thing, is that what you are? We don't need the extra attention lugging him along will bring. I can keep him inside my pack and no one will be the wiser. It'll be fine, I promise. You're killing me, priestess. Why don't you... Why do you want to keep him so much? Um, because he's helpful. The elves surely kept Nespers around for a good reason. You'll help us out, won't you? Hmm. It's my solemn duty and my distinct pleasure to offer you aid where I can. I'm not sure how much help a defenseless little kitten is going to be when we're up against the Shadow Court. Defenseless? <laughs> Never underestimate a Nesma's wisdom and impeccable ability to judge character. Wow, and so modest, too. Fine, but when you wake up in the middle of the night and find the adorable bat kitty gnawing on your face, and come crying to me, Kit. Threp has joined your party. Nah, can we... I mean, he kind of looks cute, but not in that form. Can we go back to the other one? You march on and soon reach the gates of Port Parnassus, with the sun hot overhead. You pass through the city walls of heavy stone. There's so much everything. Everything, everywhere you look, humans, orcs, and even a few elves mill through the cobbled avenues, shaded by colorful awnings. Sandy-colored buildings taller than any river bend loom over the streets. Laundry, festive lanterns, fresh fish, and more hang between them. So, what should we do first? Let's, uh, go shopping. This must be the trade bazaar back at the... Whitewater is like, I've never seen so many, so many things in one place before. You pass stall after stall of goods, beaded jewelry, exotic fruits, pottery, cookware, and skewers of charred meat. Things is Ryan. I don't even know half of what this stuff is. With a flourish, smile gestures to a pinched-faced woman guarding a stall full of feathery contraptions. You've never... Had need for feather duster made from viper lark feathers. What a simple life you've led. Towels, clothes, the finest, Polynesian silk, tan, leather, tailored while you wait. Come and try them on. See something you like, friend? You look like you could use some new gear. The outfit she's unearthed is soft, sumptuous, as so she sets it in your arms. You admire the flowing silks and soft leather buckles. Wow, it's so elegant. I look like a real city girl. Look, guys. Technically, in outfit terms, she has now reached level 5 in World of Warcraft. Maybe 10. Choose this look. Rain, you look incredible. Just changes like that. Mal's jaw slackens and he fumbles with the belt buckle he's been examining. Mm, nice, uh, I gotta say, Kit, you clean up nice. Offer a brief twirl and a bow. 
thinks it's so different from what I've been used to wearing in Riverbend. But I guess I'm not the same person anymore either. It suits you. And I bet you'll get some folks buying you free drinks at the taverns too. Okay, you two are embarrassing me. Let's get going. As you continue through the market, you know, smile, glancing around uneasily. Something the matter? When you're in this business long enough, kid, you get a sixth sense for when you're being when you're in trouble. And right now we're being watched. By who? I'm not sure yet, but I've seen at least half a dozen people glancing our way. Guards alone mostly, but a few merchants too. Why would they be watching us? You don't think it has to do with the shards? With the Shadow Council? I don't know, but we need to keep our eyes open and our wits... Uh, before we can finish, you collide with an armored figure striding the other way. Oh, well hello there, good sir. You look like you could kick someone's ass. Grim-looking elf shelves you with a sneer. You eye the weapon strapped to his back warily. Let it go. You step aside, letting the elf pass as you brush yourself off with a scowl. You glance daggers at his retreating form. That haughty jerk. Ignore him, he's not worth the effort. Definitely not. He's reading the powerful magic energy, though. The air smells so salty. Is that the ocean? Have I got a treat for you, kid. Keep up and don't get lost in the market. Mal leads you through the crowds to the docks, where he ushers you onto a rickety wooden platform. He sweeps his hand towards the glittering waters, taking up the entire horizon. There you have it. The Cartesian Sea in all of its glory. Cartesian. How original. Hundreds of boats of all shapes and sizes bob in the crystal blue harbor as seagulls call out overhead. Farther out, you can't even tell where the sea ends and the sky begins. It's it's enormous and so beautiful. Take a deep breath of briny air, letting it refresh you. When you look over at Mal, he's watching you with an odd smile. What? Nothing. Just, it's been a while since I've seen someone so sincerely impressed with an ocean view. It's kind of nice. I'm surprised you didn't claim you set this all up just for me, Mal the Magnificent. And what would you say if I did? I'd say thank you. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Except all I did was bring you to the prettiest part of the city on a good day. Well, really, you brought me to the prettiest part of the city, and what made you do that? I, uh, I mean, I just, I, I thought you'd like it, that's all. Don't read anything into it. Uh-huh, of course not. Grinning, you turn back to the sea, the vivid orange of the sun ripples in the water's reflection as it starts to set. Streaked clouds and pinks and violets stamp through the sky. Don't worry, Kane. I'll make sure you see this, too, someday. Neil leans into the cool, salty breeze with a calm smile on her face. This is just the reminder I needed that there is still beauty in the world. The light hasn't forgotten us. Well, the light is fading, so I suggest we get moving. Hey, Alfonso! Mal hops down from the platform and waves toward a mustachioed man running a fish stall. Melvatori! I thought I told you never to show your face at my stall again. And I thought I told you you'd miss me too much. You got any of the purple Parnesians? I'm trying to show my friends here a good time. Is your friend the one looking sharp in that new outfit? As a matter of fact, I am. No word to the wise, a pretty girl like you could do a lot better than this roof in. Yeah, yeah, just give me the damned oysters. Oh, just a fresh bash this morning. Well, this afternoon, you're lucky. They're in season. Alonzo rummages through his crates and unearths a tray of violet-colored oysters nestled in ice, their shells sparkling like crystals. I don't suppose this devil warned you about these, did he? What's there to be warned about? Hmm, they look pretty and delicate, but they're not 
notoriously spicy. Some folks call them the tongue melters. That doesn't sound delicious at all. I think I'll pass. Hang on, priestess. You can't. You haven't heard the best part yet. They'll turn your mouth purple. Yeah, probably from all the internal bleeding. Hmm. That sounds intriguing. I'll try it. And me. You pick up a shell and raise it towards Mal. <sighs> Two new adventures? I'll toast to them. You and Mal click your oysters together and then slurp them down at the same time. Uh, tastes like a regular oyster to me. Clutch your throat is what feels like liquid fire blazes through your mouth all the way down to your stomach. Oh, ah, uh, burns. Blinking back tears, you look over to see Mal grinning and wolfing down his third tongue melder. It's an acquired taste. You're hanging in there great for a first timer. Alonzo hands you a water skin and you chug it down as quickly as you can. You rasp out a laugh when you notice Mal's mouth is a vivid purple. You look like you've been kissing a squid. You're one to talk, kid. Is your bank mumbling? Oh, that's, uh, that's just my stomach. Do you have any anchovies we could take with us? The priestess can't get enough of them. Uh, yeah, I love those little fish with their slimy skin and their dead empty eyes. So cold and soulless. Oh, wrap some up for you? Avonda wraps up a package of slimy anchovies, and you gratefully take it and wander back into the city. We should probably get down to business, right? Nia, where'd you say the library- A shabbily dressed child comes running up to Nia and takes her hand, blinking away tears. Excuse me, miss. I'm lost and scared. Can you help me find my mommy? Of course, darling. Everything will be alright. Nia leans over, giving her a hug. Nia, wait, don't- but before he can finish, the girl grabs her coin purse and sprints off with it. My coin purse? That won't help you find your parents, little child? <laughs> she's not a little child. She's a pickpocket. Pick but she... But I... Oh. I don't think I like this city anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is there someone we need to call? A constable? Guard? Someone to help get it back? No one's gonna care about a pickpocket. If you want your purse back, we'll have to get it ourselves. You want to chase her down? Want to? No, not particularly, but also I don't want to look at the priestess's big sad eyes while she's pouting all afternoon. This side quest will let you get Nia's purse back and learn an interesting secret about one of your party members. Side quest. Uh-huh. The Thieves Guild. Let's do it. You, Mal, and Nia take off sprinting after the child in the market. Hey, get back here, you little twerp! No way, slowpokes! She sprains straight into a thick crowd of shoppers, her small form vanishing from view. Grab that child! Out of the way! Grab that child! Mm -mm. Out of the way. Move, move, move! People part with gasps and exclamations as they arrive, many dropping the wares as you speed past. Ah, uh, you're scarier than a rampaging owlbear. The child is just up ahead, glowering over her shoulder at you. Leave me alone! We just want my coin purse back! The child puts on another burst of speed, sliding nimbly under a moving ox cart, carrying a huge load of hay that moves into your path. Slide underneath it, weave around it, smash through it, slide underneath it. Drop low! Skidding over the cobblestones, your human agility guiding you perfectly under the card. I'm going to assume you as an orc would smash through it and the other one is move around it because you're an elf and you move swiftly. Good job, Rain. You're almost caught her. You run around the cart or a corner and see the child disappear into a narrow alley with a single red door. Mouth throws up a hand and you and Nia skid to a stomp. Hang on. This is about to get tricky. A hulking figure guards the door, a rusty trident propped on his shoulder. Oh, we're reusing you. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but an impalement by rusty trident isn't really how I want to go. I got this. 
With a bone where he saw him, Mal walks over to the guard. I don't know who you are, friend, but you got three seconds to turn around before I... Mal removes a glove, revealing a tattoo on the inside of his wrist. A pair of crossed daggers and a crimson diamond, framed by six blood drops. Oh, I'm sorry, Reaper. I didn't realize who you were. Come on in. You shoot Nia a confused glance, and she shrugged. Mal waves to you impatiently, and you both follow him in. The review step into an old, abandoned temple packed with people, most of them children. Some sleep on piles of hay or huddle around fires. Others sit on tables or sorting piles of loot, coin purses, rings, even a pair of spectacles. Oh my, are these all criminals? An older man in a robe approaches you. Mal shows him his tattoo and the man bows his head. And will the White Tower Reaper, to what do we owe the honor? Cut the pleasantries, Thief Master. One of your brats pickpocketed a friend of mine. My deepest apologies, she did not know. Tinaro! Turn the goods. Fine. She grudgingly shoves Nia's coin burst back at her, and then scurries off to join some friends. I'm sorry, I don't understand. What's happening here? What is this place? Tell her to lay low. Psst, Nia, we're in some kind of crime den. Maybe uh, better not ask questions. But the children, what are they doing here? It's a thieves guild, outpost. A shabby one too, if you ask me. If these kids were worth their salt, you'd never have noticed your coin purse missing. Hang on, there really is a kingdom-wide thieves guild? I thought it was a myth. Yeah, well, that's what they want you to think. But the children- You're stuck on the children, stop it. They're being trained up and put to work. Where do you think pickpockets come from? That's terrible. Terrible? These are orphans, priest, as kids from the dregs. The thief master here puts a roof over their heads, gives them three meals a day, keeps them safe from brigands and kidnappers. What he's doing here is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for him. He's training them to be thieves, criminals. Mal raises an eyebrow and moved. There's a lot worse things they could do or be than criminals. Try hungry or dead. Hmm. I have to agree with Mal. Unfortunately for Nia, she's very close-minded. She's been in a very, uh, well, high up in the ivory tower, we'll say. Sorry, Nia, but Mal's right. The real world's not an easy place for everyone. Sometimes you have to make hard choices to survive. These kids steal, but it keeps them from starving or worse. That's what matters. It's not a pretty truth, but it's a uh, truth all the same. Uh, that uh, world you wanted to see, Priestess, a lot of it looks like this. I hadn't considered that. I don't agree with teaching children to steal, but I can understand your point of view. Now then, we've got your coin purse back. Can we uh, get out of here? He turns to leave, and as you go, Nia kneels down and hands a girl who robbed her a small engraved talisman. Remember, child, whenever you need help, the Temple of Light is here. The girl stares at it skeptically, then pockets it. The three of you leave the guild and head back into the market. Nia walks in silent contemplation while you keep pace with Mal. So your tattoo got you in. Does that mean you're part of the Thieves Guild? I was. A while ago. Not anymore. They called you Reaper, that sounds ominous. Mal takes a deep breath and an unusually pained look on his face. Look, Rain. I'll help you get these shards. Um, I'll help you get your brother back. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm just gonna ask two things in return. One, I get first pick of all treasure. Two, don't ask about my past. Well, 
can I ask about your future? And where you see me in it? All that, and you're still fuller flirting. You judging? Not even a little. And you lead your group through the streets, back to the main thoroughfare. You turn a corner, finding yourselves in the shadow of the Parisian Colosseum, or Colossus. According to Fascist map, the library should be right there. But there's no library, just an empty space dotted with the makeshift tents. Figures trudge between the shanties, staring at the ground with hollow eyes. Wow, the library must have bored itself to death. Hmm, naive tourists don't even know what happened. You turn to find a man watching you from underneath the brim of his hat. I beg your pardon? Look, I can see you're not from around here, so let me give you some advice. This ain't a local tourist attraction, so you'd best scram. Flirt with him, intimidate him, defend me as armor. That naive tourist is the youngest person ever to ascend to the full rank of priestess in the Temple of Light. Whether you follow the light or not, she deserves your respect. My friend and I have come to Parnassus in search of its library. We'd appreciate if you helped us find our way, light willing. Hmm. Light has engraced the port of Parnassus in some time. Don't know why it would start now. Lance honors over, stunning Neil like a curious antique in the marketplace. She holds his gaze, chin lifted, and you see some grudging respect under his expression. But I suppose I appreciate the effort, priestess. Nothing that would get your library back. A band of orcs raided the town a few years back, mean ones, vicious. They plundered the whole damn library, burned it right into the ground. Took the loot back to the damn floating city. Flotilla? I've heard it's massive. Ah, uh, that's where Ventra Tarkali, queen of the United Orc clans, live. The business with all kinds of unsavory souls. Where were the orcs after? Beats me, all the library here was a bunch of old scrolls, artifacts, dusty things like that. Thanks so much for your help. So glad to know this was all a huge waste of time. Tosses a coin to the local, then beckons for you and me to follow him down the street, away from prying ears. Well, that's terribly logic, or tragic, that it's the Shard uh, Flotilla now. I guess it's gone forever. No, it isn't. It's at Flotilla. Then that's where we're going next. Ah, uh, I was afraid you'd say that. No. No, wait. Absolutely not. Mel? You promised to get Kate back. I promised to try, and I did. Got you all the way to the sea, didn't I? And you're going to give up just like that. That's the kind of man you are? You know, sooner or later, this guilt trip act is gonna stop working. Threat pokes his head out of Nia's back. We need to get the shard. I can't imagine the orcs would be so kind as to hand it over their plunder just because we ask for it. We need a plan, but first we need some rest. It's too late to book passage on a ship tonight. Let's find an inn and regroup in the morning. The group heads back to the heart of the city, stopping at a post office along the way, so Nia can send a dove to the Temple of Light and White Tower. Losing Fash is a great blow to the temple, but they may be able to start prepping for the purification ritual. And in the meantime, here we are. The Sirens Cove in. It's clean, quiet, and uh, that's about the best I can say for it. And so, a few hours later, in you, uh, your room at the inn. What the hell was that? Nia giggles, scratching the snoring threat behind his ears. I guess you really like those anchovies, huh? As fascinating as it is to watch an ancient kitty sleep, I need to get out and stretch my legs. Right, because you haven't been walking all day, and you're gonna go stretch your liver, you mean. Guilty as charged. Nia, how about it? I'm at that stuffy white tower of yours didn't have a pod that can compare to the ones here. I don't know. I've heard those places can get all, oh, um, rockets? We can stick to the more reputable establishments. The ones I haven't been kicked out of yet. At least. You said you wanted to see the world, right? This is the world. 
I suppose so. As long as you promise we won't stay out too late. Oh, for the love of... Mal bows to her with a dramatic flourish. I give you my word, fair priestess, and rain will come along to make sure I don't break it. Oh good, if rain's coming, then I'll know I can have fun. Really? This is a social quest. Basically, it's a diamond choice. Shut up. Look, guys, social quest. A night out. Should I stop pointing these things out and just go with it? You gently scoop this snoozing threat back and snet near satchel. Oh, gladly. I think we've all earned some fun after the day we've had. You know what? You're right. I'm looking forward to this. All right, I knew it was only a matter of time before I got you both speaking my language. Review, head down to the Ruckus Tavern below the inn. Nia sticks close to you, looking around anxiously as Mal leads you to the bar. Oh my, it's so loud. Oh, did they, did they mean to spill their drinks all over themselves like that? Ventisa, you're looking gorgeous as ever. What's your secret? The barkeeper hoists an enormous tray of empty metal tankards off her shoulder, tossing Mal a grin as you all take a seat. Not a damn does wonders of the complexion. Who are your friends, Mal? This is Rain, an adventurer of great rena- Well, I'm trying to become one, anyway. And Nia, an illustrious priestess of the light. Oh, I'm- I haven't fully ascended a priest just yet, but- The light, huh? Don't go too much of that in the port of Parnassus these days. Maybe too much adventuring, though. We heard about the raids a few years back. How they destroyed the library? Mentiza grimaces as she scrubs out the empty tankards. All of the flotilla's gone mad, if you ask me. They say Ventra Tal Kaleen united the Orc clans. Pah! All she did was make it clear that what sort of folk were welcome in a new order. And it sure isn't folk like me. That's a problem far beyond my station. My tavern's doing well, which is all I ask, really. Well, always happy to hand over my hard-earned gold to you, man. Speaking of which, Rain, yeah, there's only one rule when you're drinking with Mal. It's my treat. It's his way of bribing folk to enjoy the pleasure of his comedy, so what will it be? I'll uh, have... Well, ale. Ah, human after my own heart. Pours a draft of ale from the row of kegs behind her and slides it your way. It smells wheaty and rich. The Azra Orc clan brews this upon their islands. Their matriarch's an old friend of mine. Slide me one of the same, then. Me and my liver trusting Rain's instincts tonight. You sure about that? Because my instincts say the stuff I drank back in Riverbend was better served cleaning rust off your armor. Why would you drink it if it tasted so awful? The taste wasn't the point. What you... What, you never got drunk off cheap liquor from with the other acolytes at the temple? Certainly not. We were perfect models of decorum. Although, every now and again, we did get up to some mischief. She looks between you and Mal, a devious grin splitting across her face. Once we swapped the old high priestess's lecture notes for a poem we found in the archives, we read the whole thing out loud. Tell me, what it was at least a dirty poem? Of course not. It was an elven historic. Quite lovely, actually. Wow. You acolytes sure knew how to party. Mel gestures at the row of kegs behind the bar with a winning grin. Well, Nia, you're no longer an acolyte. You're among friends. Now's the time to live it up a little, if you feel so inclined. And by little, he really uh, does mean a little. Don't worry, um, I'll make sure you don't get go signing any scandalous elven poetry. I suppose I could try something, though I've heard alcohol tastes a bit unusual. What kind of taste do you like, dearie? I'm sure I've got something for you. Maybe something a little sweet and not too strong, please? So, like wine. 
and teas her and corks a bottle of white elvish wine. Pours her a glass. Undermount Voscato coming right up. A classic drink for a classy young lady. You raise your drink towards your companions. They join you, and you can't help smiling at Nia's daintily raised pinky. To new adventures and to new friends. And if I ever get to be stuck with anyone on a desperate mission to save my brother, I'm glad it's you two. May the light continue to guide our passage. Couldn't have said it better myself. Here, here. Put your glasses together and everyone takes a long drink. Nia's mouth puckers up and she squishes her eyebrows together. Well, that certainly is uh, different. And different as in good. Different as in, Mal, I owe you my thanks for opening my eyes to the world of fine spirits. I'm not so sure about that yet, but I suppose I can keep drinking until I find out. Also, my face feels warm. Is my face supposed to feel warm? But it's a good warm. Or is it... Am I dying? No, your face will be cold. Easy there. Maybe you should slow down. We do want you to actually remember your first time you drank alcohol. How about you, Rain? Tell me. You uh, got up to more trouble back in Riverbend than planting poems. Oh yeah, I got in all kinds of trouble. I'll tell a funny story. Sexy story. Let's try sexy. Okay, so way back in Riverbend, I had this crush. Nia hides a peel of giggles behind her hand and Mal quirks an eyebrow. Tell us more. What were they like? Well, the problem is he... She was the mayor's daughter. We're doing it. And of course it would be terribly improper for the mayor's daughter to fool around with an orphan like me. Let me guess. That didn't stop you, though. Not at all. The two of us had a secret fling. Every chance we got, we snuck off. We couldn't keep our hands off each other. Mia flushes, suddenly unable to meet your gaze, and that just makes you grin. Sounds like a good time. Oh, it was great. And, uh, but we probably should have practiced in a little more discretion. One night, when we thought the mayor was gone, we got together in his parlor. He walked in on us along with the entire city council. Mal lets out a whistle while Nia busies herself taking another drink of wine. Don't tell me that was the end of your fling. It kinda had to be. The mayor was not impressed, but it was uh, worth it for the lack of horror on his face. In the far corner of Ventiza's tavern, a bard strums his lute, tuning each string in turn, and launches into an epic ballad. Oh, I love this one. Ghosts, dragons, and sea monsters. He's weighing in time with the music, letting the dramatic saga wash over you. Patrons spill onto the dance floor, forming pairs and larger dancing circles as they move to the melody. This sounds like a local favorite. I've never heard it before, but I love it already. What are you waiting for, then? You should get out there and dance, too. Okay, but I'm not dancing alone. Um... No offense, but I like Mal. Like, Mia's all, Mia's all right, and we'll see, but Mal's more... Yeah. Mal's grin broadens, and he holds an arm out to you. As long as you promise not to step on my toes. Oh, then you'd better teach me the dance. I make no promises otherwise. With a chuckle, Mal leads you on the dance floor. He positions your hands in his, his thumbs brushing over your knuckles. It's not too difficult, really. To left, back, right, forward... He leads you through the dance as a ballad unfurls around you. His steps are confident and you're following along in no time. There, you're getting it. You're a natural rain. I have a surprisingly good teacher. You've got some moves in your mag magnificence. Mal's gaze rests on yours as you dance into the next verse. His smile is different than usual, more natural than the ones you've seen before. Mal, is that your real smile? Shh, not so loud, it'll be our little secret. What were you thinking about just then? Oh, it's nothing, I was just remembering. He sighs, his expression becoming a little bit reminiscent, a little bit pained. My mother used to sing this song to me and my sister. I think it's where my love of adventuring comes from. If you slow down as the ballad turns into a... A lament, and you wait until he meets your eyes again. 
I'm happy to listen to whatever parts of you you're willing to share with me. Sharing, huh? Gotta admit, I don't have too much experience with that. You're more than just your adventures, though. It's who you are beneath that bravado that matters to me. Well, that's a first for me. Usually my bravado is the only thing that uh, sees me through. Is that a bad thing if I like the real you better? I guess time will tell. Press my head on my shoulder. Mal misses a step as you move closer and lay your head down. He quickly recovers and wraps his arms around your waist. You trying to throw me off my game, kid? Too late, already did. He smells like forest dew and gentle spice. You can feel his chest rising and falling as he breathes. Consider this my thanks for teaching me the Nan steps. Considered, accepted, and wholly appreciated. Neither of you speaks as the ballad reaches its peak. The bard wails a mournful farewell to the hero as her strumming fades away. But you and Mal stand still for several more moments. I, um, I guess we'd better get back to Nia. Right. Right. Great, uh, great plan. After a few more rounds of drinks, it's closing time. You leave the tavern with a farewell to Ventiza, then bump your shoulder into Mal's. Thanks for the suggestion, Mal. That was uh, just the night out we all needed. No one got stabbed or kicked. Truly, the light graced us e this evening. Graced us, did you? Did you just make a joke? Clearly, I've been spending too much time around you. Well, why stop now? The night's still young. Plenty more taverns we can get kicked out of, or... As around the corner, you find yourself blocked in the alleyway, facing down five men wielding crossbows. Stop right there, all of you! Or enemies we can face in dark alleys. Mal raises his hands and surrender as the men name their crossbows. We don't want any trouble, fellas. Just enjoying a night out on the town. Why don't you uh, help yourself to my coin purse and let us be on our way? A squat man in lavish clothing pushes through the others. He brandishes a chubby finger at the three of you. Oh boy, it's you. I'm giving you his voice. There's no need for bribery, Kerr. I'm fine. I'm just fine, city's mayor. You ruffians are under arrest. Arrest? We are criminals. Bound them up, men. These bandits shall want them dead or alive. The men with crossbows step from the shadows, revealing themselves as city guards. They move towards you, ready to blind, bind your hands. I'm going to try talking them down. Easy there, fellas. I'm sure as mayor, you're a reasonable man. And I'm sure we can work this out like reasonable people. You flash a charming smile. You see, I'm just a traveler from Riverbend on my first venture away from home. I don't know the first thing about banditry. You pat your meager coin purse to make a point. A couple coins clinking together make a sorry sound. We've only been in your city a few hours, and have witnesses everywhere we've been. Alfonso at the docks, the merchants at the market. The guards glance at one another, starting to seem uncertain. One addresses the mayor. Sir, are you sure we've got the right people? They don't look like they're carrying anything stolen. Of course I'm certain. Do as you're told, or have you arrested for insubordination? Trap flutters up to your shoulder with a hiss, ears flattened back against his head. Be careful. I sense darkness on the mayor. Shadow darkness. He's a servant of the court. The shadow court is here? The mayor draws a blade, lips pulling back into a snarl. Shadows billow around him, doubling his stature. Well, now I'm afraid you leave me no choice. He lunges forward, but a figure drops down from the rooftops between you. Not so fast. A blast of magical energy erupts from the elf's hands, sending the mayor's men sprawling. The mayor remains standing, blade at the ready. He glares at the elf, who stares back coldly. Stoic features arranged in an expression of loathing. Where, where? You want to fight? Gladly. 
may lunges again, but the elf deftly sidesteps, hair whipping around as he spins behind the mare. Quick as the shadow, he draws a slender sword strapped to his back and decapitates the mare. He screams as the man's lifeless body thuds to the ground. You're... you! You're the guy from the market earlier, what's going on? Now is not the time. Behind him, the mayor's men stagger back to their feet. His gaze sharpens and he flicks the blood off his blade. Run! Who is this mysterious figure? A helpful ally or a treacherous enemy? Find out next time. On Dragon Ball! No, I mean kidding. I'm kidding. So without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down to the description below. Links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support yours truly. It's very much appreciated if you do so. And you can consider joining the channel. All you have to do is hit that join button if you do not know how or it's not available for you. Most likely you're on a mobile device or uh, a country that has not had it enabled because that's YouTube. But if you are unable to, just let me know. I can drop a link in the comment section below for a direct link to the join. And most likely it'll... Uh, take your right to it. So without further ado, how was your week? It's uh, now Wednesday, only just a couple more days. So if you're hanging on, you're like, man, this week sucks. Just hang in there. It'll always get better. If it doesn't, let me know and I will beat the crap out of your week. Thank you and have a great day. Bye.